Welcome back to the Good Success Podcast, folks. I am your host, Tom Olson, and I have a friend of mine, Jake, who is actually not very far from us. He is right here in Chicago, um, and I'm going to let him introduce himself a little bit. But Jake is the CEO of Groundbreaker, which is a software application that helps real estate investment firms automate workflow in fundraising, investor reporting, and investment management. So how you doing, Jake? Hey, I'm doing really well. How are you? It's awesome. Um, we had a little bit of rain this morning, but other than that, like it's, it's coming, it's clearing up um, and we're having a good day over here at Good Success. Um, so, you know, it's, it's interesting because in a lot of businesses uh, that, I, that I talk to, having processes and having automation in their business is, is a real key to being able to scale or a real key to being able to maybe even be more efficient with our time and with our resources. And, you know, I'm excited to talk to Jake today about those things. And it's, it's even one of the things that EOS teaches, you know, having make, make sure you have processes and make sure that those processes are lean as they possibly can be. And it just, sometimes it just takes time for us as entrepreneurs um, to be able to have those things. But to me, you know, I, I, I think it's very interesting um, you know, as being a Christian entrepreneur, you know, the Bible is pretty clear in Proverbs. It talks about um, being more efficient and, and trying to make sure that we are making the best out of what we, we, we have and being able to be more uh, efficient with what we have. You know, if I were to go out and, um, you know, try to cut down a tree, I could probably eventually get it cut down with um, a hammer you know, in the backside of that hammer, I probably could eventually make it happen. And a lot of times uh, we in business, uh, we, 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 we are as good as stewards as we know how, but we just aren't willing to kind of like reach for that next step. And, and I'm excited to hear what Jake might be able to do for real estate entrepreneurs today. So that, that's awesome. So here at Good Success, I do want to remind everybody um, about the 30 Days to Good Success workbook. I know a lot of you guys have read it. I've heard so many good um, reviews on it and, and, and people are getting blessed from it. So if you guys haven't got it, you guys can go to goodsuccess.com and you can, can just find it in the uh, books or resources tab there, um, or it might, might be in our store tab. Um, but also we've got the Good Success Mastermind that is coming up in just a couple of weeks. If you don't get in it for this one, and I know sometimes people right now are a little bit still too uh, uh, fearful to travel um, or whatnot. And if that's you, that's totally fine. But many, but we, we reached out to our mastermind community and we said, hey, what do you guys want to do? Um, we already pushed it off a little bit, you know, for a month, it was supposed to be in April, we ended up making it, I mean, May, we ended up making it in June, but the vast majority of our mastermind members said, no, you know what, I want to go, I want to have a live event. Um, we are also offering it as a virtual event for people. It's still the, the same cost, it's still the exact same um, thing, we're, we're not really discounting it for that, for that virtual audience, but if you guys are interested in that, you guys can find out more information about the Good Success Mastermind at goodsuccess.com. Also, our very next event, in um, August, um, the, the, the Good Success Mastermind, the boot camp in front of that will be talking about operations and talking about setting up systems, setting up processes, setting up possibly automation. Maybe we'll even get Jake to come out and, and teach about, about automations. Um, but um, it's really focused on the structure of your business and we're really going to try to help business owners um, be able to, to, to think more clearly about where their business is actually at in, in the lifespan span of their business, but also what processes, what things do they need to put in place for their particular business at this moment and, you know, to try to move that needle and try to, you know, to try to make, um, to try, try to make you really be what you were created to be and help the people that you want to help. At Good Success here, we're all about work to have to give, working with our hands, the thing which is good so we can have to give to those in need. And at the end of the day, I want to be able to help as many purpose-driven entrepreneurs live life on purpose, for purpose, and to be able to do a greater good um, by being more efficient in their business and by um, being all that they possibly can in their business. So, um, also, uh, I do want to remind everybody about the Community Go-Giver event. We also did move that, so there has been a little bit of confusion. It was set for June, and we have moved that to September 17th, 18th, and 19th, um, right here in Gary, Indiana, where we talk about how you can use real estate to have a positive impact on your community. We show you what we're doing. We actually have a bus tour half a day where we take people out and actually show them the houses that we're working on and the neighborhoods that we're changing 
one house at a time. It is an awesome event, great education for learning how to, how to raise private money, how, how, to, how to do better investments in your self-directed IRA, um, how, to, how to leave a legacy and, and, have, and create the right legacy in today's world. Um, and, and, uh, and we're excited about that as well. So you guys can go to communitygogiver.com or I also believe that there's tabs at the Good Success website. Before we get started, I do wanna remind everybody, if you haven't already done this, go to iTunes and give this podcast a five-star rating. It really helps us and, it would, and, I, and, I, and, and I, I would really appreciate if you guys could do that. So without further ado, let's get in to, uh, for, with Jake, which actually, like I said, right here in Chicago, um, you know, t- tell us a little bit about Groundbreaker and just tell, just tell us you know, how you got started and you know, just kind of maybe give us your background a little bit on that, Jake. Sure, Tom. Thank you. So I started Groundbreaker after working in a real estate investment space as a professional on the front lines, having to uh, underwrite assets, put them into PowerPoint presentations for an investment committee, talk through the deal terms and everything else, and then go and close on an asset and uh, manage it. And I saw that whole life cycle and said, this whole process of you know, raising money, marketing, and working with investors and the data that comes from it, which is sensitive in nature and requires a certain level of compliance, is very manual and cumbersome. And uh, we were growing very quickly at the firm that I was at, and I could just see the writing on the wall. Uh, we would have to plug in you know, more analysts and spend more hours after midnight in the office. I mean, I just remember being there working very late, uh, often, and it just isn't something that can scale. So I wanted to find a better way and uh, connected the dots with technology as I ventured out, left the REIT and started working with several different technology uh, ventures. Um, but I wasn't a technical person when I started. So uh, it's, you know, it's been a, a great learning experience um, going out on this endeavor and starting the company. And it's really grown from what began as just a online system to be able to have your deal uh, up there for your investors to see to becoming a full-blown investment management software that really mirrors the workflow that a deal sponsor goes through when they're acquiring an asset, raising capital, and then managing the relationships with their investors all the way to close and operations and payback of their initial capital and profit on, on to the next deal. So interesting. So is this built on an actual uh, platform or is it just, ju- is this just your own platform that you guys have built? We have built everything uh, with our own proprietary code base. So basically from, so basically the software is meant to solve a couple problems, right? So it sounds like the software that you guys have created have is, is here to solve like the, uh, the um, upfront um, due diligence process. Right. So tell us a little bit about what it does in, in the, you know, to help that actual due diligence, like what things, what, what fields in there and what, you know, kind of what, what, what is it helping you track and how does it save you time? Yeah. So some people, uh, they know really well what they need to do. Um, and it's not really helping on the process of figuring out how to fill an offering memorandum out. But for some people, it does give them that level of structure. Um, so think about it this way, instead of having to create a PowerPoint presentation, format it, turn it into a PDF and email it to all your investors, you can go into Groundbreaker, you have a templated, easy to use system where you're really just writing in the amounts of how much you're gonna raise, what the IRR, cash on cash ranges are. It's all kind of plugged in there for you in a template, so it's easy to figure out what information to include as well. And then you publish it onto a website where it's your website fully branded to your company and it helps you to be able to take yourself out of the equation when you talk to investors, you're going to be able to tell the story, but if they're interested in investing, they can find it online, log in, and then you don't need to be on the phone with them, walking them through everything. They can go look at the documents, look at the deal, sign the subscription, fund the transaction without you ever having to be there. So it cuts down a ton of time on um, setting up that deal and formatting it and making it look professional and then getting it out to the right people and giving them the tools so that they can go about their investing without you being a blocker. That's awesome. So um, I also see here that it also, does it include its own CRM? It does. So you guys have your own CRM and then it's almost as if you've created this little platform for them to be able to kind of almost have their own website for these offerings. 
yes, it, um, it allows investors to log in. It's not like a full blown website where you can build your marketing page and about us and all that kind of stuff. It can link to an existing website or if none of those things are really important, then by all means, you could just treat it like a website and people can log into it and see your deals. So it's kind of almost more like a squeeze page. Uh, I'll call it an investor portal. I got you. Um, okay. Yeah. So you can, you can share this with other people though, that, that might want to invest in your deals. Yeah. And if they're not already investors with an account, they can sign up and register and you have the ability to approve them and share whichever deals you want with the investors in a compliant way. So, or I'm assuming you probably just then maybe it'll create PDFs for you that you could obviously send out to your email list through your, to the CRM that you guys have created for them. Yeah, we are working on the ability to package uh, the materials from Groundbreaker into PDF outputs. Um, it's something that I'd love to be able to do, but uh, currently we don't offer. So people really have to be able to log in and see everything. And I think for, for, for one reason, it's actually nice because for compliance, you don't want to be sharing your deal with people you don't know or having the information leak out because that's how you can get in trouble. Absolutely. So you're also trying to uh, combat, you know, the legalities of this world that we have when it comes to raising money for a large project and other things like that. So, you know, it's kind of interesting. And when you're, when you're doing real estate, you always have to kind of look at uh, how this is going to affect my taxes. Like uh, the, the accountant, you know, you have to kind of think about, you have to think about the, um, the, and then you have to think about your attorney. So it's like, when you ask your attorney what to do, he's going to tell you something sometimes totally polar opposite of what the accountant's going to say, and as a real estate investor, you just have to understand, well, what parts of risk are you willing to take? And then what parts of taxes is more important to you and, and how to make sure that's all. So you guys have tried to create a template basically for investors. I'm assuming this isn't, is this really like for smaller deals or is this really more for the larger raises for like a fund or for like a syndication type of deal? You know, a lot of our customers are syndicators, but many of them are also funds and the size of the investment doesn't really matter. We're agnostic. We're agnostic to property type. It's really a tool that people can use. I would say that it's uncommon to see an institution come online and, you know, do a $5 million investment through the portal, but high net worth investors, uh, you know, who are using it, make investments as large as a million, $10 million, depending on who the individual is. So it, there's no limitations uh, in, in really how you can use the software and uh, companies want to look professional. So that's one of the big things that they come to us for is just to be able to have that system in place, whether they're raising capital through it or they're just using it for reporting in a place where investors can access their documents and how much capital they've outlaid and what they've gotten back. Um, it also just serves that purpose, you know? Awesome. It sounds like uh, I'd love to be able to sit down with you guys and have some coffee some days just to kind of, kind of go over what, what our, you know, all you guys do and kind of how you guys look at deals. Um, and, and you guys being local here, it might be something that we might be able to do soon. So, um, but, but, but did, why don't you just give us a little bit more information? I'm assuming um, you guys have a ground back, you know, breaker website, but maybe just give us a little bit more information. Is there different levels? Is just kind of just one, you know, all sites, one size fits all. Is, is, is there like, what, what are we talking about? So if I want to go to you and I say, Hey, I want to get on your portal. Um, what does that process look like? How much does it cost? Or is there, like I said, is there different levels and what, and what does it all include? Yeah. So um, we tailor the experience for every customer, depending on what their needs are. It's not necessarily a one size fits all, but at this point we don't limit the amount of features, uh, the number of features. We don't have any hidden fees. Everything is available on our website. So people can get us, get started as with as little as a hundred dollars a month. Um, they can sign up on the site if you're bigger and you know, you want to learn if you know how the solution is going to support your needs and you have more in depth questions, we can go through a demo. Uh, the demo videos are also available on the portal as well. If you go and request an instant demo and fill out the form, you can get access to those videos. Um, and so, Generally speaking, uh, things are, uh, it's a fluid experience for getting onboarded. Um, somebody that doesn't have any assets or information to transfer can get started in a few days. Uh, we also take groups that might be operating their business entirely in Excel and, you know, spreadsheets and spreadsheets and folders with documents filled to the brim. Uh, we'll take those for a firm that's wanting to transition their business to an all-in-one system like Groundbreaker and we'll import all of that uh, information for them. 
And so, you know, doing that's a little bit more involved. We go and do a data transfer process and uh, get the, the, the data into the system. And that might take like a 30 day, you know, time frame to get somebody live. Absolutely. So it is, so like to actually be on the portal, it's like a hundred dollars a month, right? I mean, that's kind of like what your baseline is. Yeah, if, that's the, that's the baseline. Mm -hmm. But, in, but if you want like you to do add an actual project for you, like you're almost kind of building something um, unique to that individual that, that, that you guys, it, it, I mean, is it built unique or is it just more or less, you're just getting their data into your system? With that it's really with? just the latter. We're getting the data into the okay. system. Um, but, but it's highly configurable uh, in terms of the capability of taking in different site types of data and, uh, and information on your deal. So. Yeah, you're kind of taking this away from me because I think that all the world's problems can be solved in a spreadsheet. So when you when you take when you take that away from from somebody like me, that's kind of a spreadsheet geek. That uh, you know sometimes it uh, it's it's kind of you know whenever there's change, there's always you know like a little bit of fear that that gets inside of people. So what would you suggest if somebody was like that and they and you know they're just like me and they're like, hey, you know, I know you like your spreadsheets. You know, but what can this do? What is the power of this? You know, because sometimes I'll just be honest with you, like one of the biggest struggles that people that have been in this business for a period of time have is that like, for me, if you, if you looked at all of the, the, the different softwares that I'm paying for over seven different companies, I mean, it really adds up number one in number, but then number two, it's kind of like, they don't all talk to each other. So like, you know, it, there definitely is a concern from investors out there that, oh, this is just another one that I'm going to have to like figure out and learn. Um, but, but, but I mean, convince me, help me understand how, 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 how is this going to actually help me save, save time down the road? Well, this is going to reduce your systems significantly. Um, so most real estate investment professionals have a way of paying their investors and reporting to them through email, through writing checks or through sending wires. And that all takes a bunch of time. So think about how many quarterly distributions or monthly distributions you're doing and how long it's taking you to do those. Okay. In Groundbreaker, you can enter a distribution amount in. Our system will calculate and split it according to the ownership in the deal. And so each investor gets the appropriate amount. You get to review it and then you publish it. That instantly reports the distribution into their investor portal. So you don't need to send anything out. You don't need to make any pretty graphs. We do that for you. And then with our ACH direct deposit feature, you can actually send the funds and track the funds settling in the investor's bank account. So you never have to write a check again or send a wire. You do it all within the system and it takes a few minutes. So that's one example right there. And I mean, our clients, they rave about that feature because it just simplifies, you know, so many different systems in one. Um, people complain about chasing down investors because they don't cash checks. People complain about having to go outside of the system, go into their online bank. And even if they've got an online system for entering the wire information, you're still transcribing those numbers, number by number into a form. And what if you mess it up by one number? I mean, how much stress are, is involved in getting those payments out? And you're doing that every month or every quarter for how many investors? Okay. And then I want to talk about something else too. And this is maybe less about time saving, but more about how we can empower people to be able to create change in their community. When you have the ability to raise capital and manage relationships with investors in a more scalable way, more people can get into the real estate syndication game and be successful and more people can create change. So Groundbreaker gives people the ability to more efficiently raise money and realize uh, their potential of you know, being real estate syndicators and owning real estate and operating it for investment purposes. And I think that's also a very exciting point too. Yeah, that's awesome. I really appreciate that. Um, and that kind of, you know, kind of leads me to my next question. I normally ask the guests is, so why do you guys do what you do? Why, why, why was Groundbreaker created? You know, why, why do you get up in the morning? You know, like what is the whole, whole purpose for all this for you? Well, you know, that was the original vision. We want to democratize the access to the real estate investment profession and make it something that's just more fun to be in as a, you know, as a modern real estate professional. I was frustrated. I didn't want to do it. You know, I, I felt like my time was being wasted on these menial tasks that, um, you know, I, I, the intelligent human being that I am was not, you know, exercising his full potential. And so I wanted to have a better system selfishly 
Um, but I think it's true for everybody else in the space. And then there's that other factor of being able to raise money and impact your community and uh, get to a point where you can actually be a real estate entrepreneur. Um, and everybody has, you know, friends and family investors uh, that we can, or, you know, most people have the ability to, um, to do that. So it's, it's an exciting value proposition. And then personally, just uh, the challenge of taking on um, being an entrepreneur, stretching my capability. Uh, it is so hard to know what life is going to throw at you. And I'd rather be in a position where everything is unpredictable and I'm forced to really come, you know, face the music and come to the challenge rather than just doing something that's easy and predictable and doesn't really stretch me, you know? So you did it originally to try to help yourself and then you kind of figured, Hey, I can help a bunch of other people with this. And then now um, the way, the reason why you continue to do this is because you want to be challenged. And there's a lot of people out there that are like that, you know, they just like, Hey, I don't want this to be easy. You know, like I talk about this all the time with financial freedom. People are like, how in the world do you reach financial freedom? I'm like, that's the easy part. Like the hard part is like figuring out why you want to do something after you've reached financial freedom. And after, you know, that, 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 the whole thing's happened. So, you know, um, I mean, to me, I, I just created goals that are much more, much bigger than I am. Um, but some people, they just, they just want to stay challenged. They want to stay focused. They, they don't want to um, end up, I, I, you know, it's funny to also like one of the people in my mastermind has told me like he retired at eight, 28 years old with, um, eight figures. And, you know, he said the next three years of his life was the most miserable three years of his entire existence. And, you know, he had to do something that was actually going to challenge him and actually going to, you know, have, have a reason for living. And, you know, now he works like 80 hours a week. He doesn't have to, but he just loves it because this is like what he, what he loves to do. So that's awesome. Great, great, great feedback. So um, what exciting, do you, have, do you guys have any exciting projects or any kind of exciting offerings or anything that you guys are doing right now that maybe the audience would, would be interested in? Uh, yeah, well, one of the big things that we're working on right now, I think is going to change the game on real estate investing. You can do it in some other platforms that do like real estate crowdfunding. But as far as being able to get your own software to do this, uh, it's unique and uh, is going to create a lot of efficiency in the funding process. So we're rolling out uh, the feature to actually invest in real estate through uh, ACH. You can link your bank account, go through KYC and AML, and you can transfer money uh, electronically through the application. And nobody else can do that. Uh, it's just creates so much more ease for investors and they never, they'll, you know, Imagine you're like evaluating an investment and you got your mobile phone with you. You're nowhere near a bank and you can go and invest in real estate. It's, this is really cool. So being able to have an ACH feature on the, now are you also creating like crowdfunding, like opportunity, or like opportunities, but actual like ways for people to, to do crowdfunding or is this more or less just on those investors that have been on the platform that are trying to raise capital that they can allow to be able to accept ACH through, through your platform? There are certainly people that want to do crowdfunding and general solicitation or using regulation A and raising from non-accredited investors. Uh, that's something that we're not very strong on right now, just because the functionality needed to support that um, in a compliant and organized way is really not, um, it's not built for that. But if somebody wanted to do that and wanted to use some of those regulations, they could certainly do it with Groundbreaker. It's just not really our core focus. But what, but what, what, what you're saying that you're trying to make it allow is that for them to actually be able to accept ACH? Correct. Uh, okay. ACH is a way of, of making investment instead of having to go outside of the platform and do a wire. Right. Yes, exactly. No, I, I definitely agree with that. And I, I can definitely see how it could be much easier for people um, to just be able to ACH 50 grand in to be able, you know, to, to something instead of having to call the bank or go to the bank and do some kind of a wire um, type of transfer. And I know a lot of people um, that use some of the larger banks like Chase, for instance, you know, we can do all of ours from our laptop or even probably from my phone. I don't, maybe they don't do phones yet, but basically you can do it from a laptop and be able to do it in an office at least without having to go. And they might have restrictions on how much you can do in a day, but, um, but ACH would obviously be a much easier and then you don't have wire fees and you don't have all that involved as well. So, um, and, and then especially maybe even from a self-directed IRA account, 
where you don't have to worry about those wire fees as well. It could probably be done, um, you know, through the ACH as well. That'd be, that'd be also a better way. And even transferring the money back to the investors in the same in the same manner mm -hmm. um, would would definitely be a, a, a good tool. I, I would believe, honestly, even for us. I mean, we use Chase. So, like, when you said, you know, how much time are you going to save by not having to write those checks out every month? I'm like, well, we don't set them up anyway. We set it up at the beginning of the deal, and it just automatically goes out every single month. So in a way we have automated that process, but we don't act, but we do also have Buildium for our property management company. And that kind of does the same thing you're talking about. It has to go through Buildium and then it goes through that. So do you have, is there other competitors that you guys are kind of, kind of, it doesn't seem like there's anything out there that's exactly like what you do, but is there other, um, I, I, and I may be competitors is the wrong word, but other similar type platforms, like I just mentioned Buildium and other platforms like that, that you would say, Hey, we've taken like what we maybe not taken what they do, but like there are similarities to, to, to what you do to some of the other platforms like that. Yeah. So there are definitely um, companies that have sprouted out of the woodwork to uh, take advantage of the opportunity. And there always will be um, right. people. Uh, many of the companies that are in this space, uh, the thing that they're lacking um, that I believe makes us different is that our software is incredibly easy to use and it has such a clean and beautiful design. So when you go to our website and you, you know, look at uh, the way that we structure the information and the spacing around everything, it's just designing beautiful software and making it a, a, a good experience for somebody who's using it. Um, software development isn't easy and it's very hard to make something that's both robust but also um, simple. And that's what we've done. Awesome. So again, let's just get back to the actual product and actually my, our audience getting a hold of you. If our audience were to want to get in touch with you, um, how would they do that? Do you just want to send them to the website? Do you have a phone number, Facebook, event page? Do you have any other, any other uh, promotions out there for people to be able to look at? Yeah, the best way to get in touch with us is really to go through the website and fill out the instant um, demo request form. And if you want to note down that you came out of this podcast, uh, there's a little note section in the forum and you can write good success in there. Awesome. So you just go to, I'm, and what is the website address? Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, it's That's groundbreaker.co. Okay. okay. So groundbreaker.co. Amelia, when you're doing this, if you can make sure that that gets in the comments below on Facebook and gets on the other um, places that they can get to that at on YouTube and such. So um, groundbreaker.co is the best way to be able to get in touch with Mike. And um, again, like he said, I think the best thing for you to do at that, that point, if you are interested is like he said, request a demo and say, Hey, like, what does this look like? And um, maybe they can um, kind of walk you through that process and see if this is something that might be a good fit for you. Anything else you want to you want to talk about that specifically, or, or any other pr promotions you have going on right now, or anything else other than, um, like you said, if it, obviously it's great to to let them know where where the lead came from, and if you guys watched the, the the podcast or found us on Facebook or YouTube or one of our other social media channels, let them know that that Good Success sent you the lead or that you heard from him on the Good Success podcast. But anything else that you want to mention about that? Uh, you know, nothing in particular, except that we have a really, well, we have a really good blog. If you're just relearning about real estate investing and you need, uh, to, you want to just know, uh, any, any of the topics we have, we've got stuff on due diligence, De Delaware statutory trust, and we're going to continue pumping out great content. That's really educational, uh, focused and, uh, is, uh, going to help you guys learn a little bit more about the industry. You can subscribe to our newsletter through our site as well. Yes. Awesome. It's always good to learn how other people are doing deals and how their different ideas of due diligence. I've been doing real estate for 20 years now, and I still think I learn at least five or 10 new tips about uh, due diligence every single year. And there's still things that I, I learned because I, because I made a mistake, um, you know, doing, doing deals now. So that's awesome. So we, we got two more questions for you, Mike. And we, I mean, Jake, sorry. And we ask every single people, every, every single person that comes on, on this website, on, on the podcast, these two questions. Um, and, you know, good success for us is, is, a, is a very, just the name good success is actually important to us. Um, we created it on purpose. And, um, you know, for us, a lot of people, a lot of people around the country do know who we are and what we do and kind of why we do it. Um, but, but when you heard that word good success, 
Uh, what did that mean to you? Again, like good success means a lot to us, but what does good success mean to you? To me, it means uh, doing things right. And sometimes it's really hard to do things right. But ultimately, if you focus on being fair, being transparent and honest with everybody around you and doing the right thing, it's going to work out in the long run, especially if you're in business and you plan to build a successful business. Nothing happens overnight. And so you have to be willing to give. You have to be willing to risk it all on your reputation. That's awesome. I love that. That's, that's great. And they, again, like we, we don't ever rehearse these. We never really know what the person's going to say, but I, I appreciate those, those words, Jake. And I, and I, I agree, you know, good success. It's not easy. And, and that's really uh, kind of, you know, for me, it's, it's kind of a hard thing to sell. It's hard for me to sell good success because good success is really about the diligence. It's really about doing the right thing, even when the right thing's not easy to do. You know, so many times in this world, we see people that just take the easy way out. And, you know, I go to conferences and I go to, you know, a bunch of things and I, and I hear all of the marketing speech about, I just want to sit on a, on a, on a, on a house on a hill with a pocket, pocket full of hundred dollar bills, or I want to sit on a beach with a martini, or I want to have all the cars and all the great mansions. And like, they, they're doing it for the wrong reason. There's like no, there is really no satisfaction in that whatsoever. Yeah. You might have a quick fun trip. You might have something that, you know, you have a great time, but at the end of the day, doing right is so much more important. And that's the legacy you're really going to leave. You know, I'd much rather leave a legacy of I was kind. I, I, I did things right. I apologized when I was wrong. I, I would much rather leave that legacy than leave a legacy of, oh, he had the fancy cars, he had the fancy yacht, he had the fan. And you might have all those things, and it's great. Don't get me wrong. Like, I love to enjoy the finer things of life, and we get to do that um, all the time here, and God's been so good to us. Um, but I want to make sure I'm living for a bigger purpose, and that bigger purpose really is doing the right thing and putting my head on my pillow every single night and being able to know that um, I did everything I possibly could do that day to make sure that I did the right thing. That's awesome. So again, one more question before we, before we go here, Jake, and we, again, we ask every single person this, just cause I kind of want to just, every single person I meet, I will, I want to learn from my mom used to teach. She used to teach me when I was in high school. She's like every single person out there can teach you something. I don't care if it's a four year old or a 10 year old, um, or somebody that's a hundred years old, they they know something you don't know, and they've learned something that you haven't learned, and you need to learn from every single person. So leave the audience just with just one thing—a piece of advice. Maybe it's a book, a resource, or maybe something you learned, or just a statement that you that has stuck true with you. Whatever those things are, just leave the audience with one thing. What would that one thing be? Okay, uh, so I got this one, uh, borrowed it from um, from Chris Hadfield, uh, and really inspired by him and his example of uh, how he leads. And uh, I think, you know, when you look at like other people in the world, we tend to assume that other people have everything together, that they're fully formed and that they don't have problems just because we deal with so much and we take it all internally. Um, and my piece of advice that I borrow from him is just to take uh, every situation with a little bit more of a, of a soft cushion and try to understand. Um, don't let people off the hook for any inadequacies uh, that they offer, but just know that they don't have it all figured out either. And it'll make you a little bit softer and it'll make uh, things, I think, better when you go in with that kind of perspective. I think that's really wise. I mean, I wrote down here, take everything with a soft cushion. I kind of wanted to like, you know, dig into that a little bit more there. But basically, I, I, unless I'm, I'm reading this wrong, it basically just means have a little empathy and be, and like understand that, Everybody else doesn't have it all figured out either. And, you know, sometimes we are hard on ourselves, right? If we don't have it figured out, I, I bet you, you are Jake. I can tell that, that like, you might even be in the software development yourself. And, you know, you like want that to be perfect and it's gotta be perfect every time where you're going to be hard on yourself, but you know, and it's really hard with some of us that are hard on ourselves to not be hard on other people and to not like expect them to be perfect and expect them to know everything that you know, um, but, 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 but there are things in our own lives that we don't know. So like having that understanding about ourselves that, Hey, you know, guess what? We're all just a bunch of dirt. And if we want to sling a bunch of dirt on a bunch of other people, we're just a bunch of dirt slinging a bunch of dirt on a bunch of dirt. It doesn't really matter. 
And it's much better to have the, the mindset and the uh, understanding that guess what? Everybody is going through a tough time. So just be kind to everybody. And everybody has their things that they go home to the skeletons in their closet, the things that they wish they never have done that, that they never did that maybe they, they, they did do or the things that they have had failures on and, and things that still burn them that uh, they haven't been able to get over, people that haven't been able to forgive. And um, I, I love that advice. I haven't had anybody else say that, um, you know, specifically on the Good Success Podcast with 200 plus episodes. So that I, I, that's really refreshing to hear. I love that. My pastor used to have a statement, be kind to everybody because everybody's having a, a, a every, because everybody's having a tough time. And he used to leave the, his radio show for like 20 years. Um, with that, with that statement. So that's awesome. So thanks for having us. I, I really appreciate for you, your time today and for investing in our audience. And if anybody wants to get a hold of, of, of Jake at Groundbreaker, just go to groundbreaker.co. You guys can be able to get in touch with him. Um, so that really that's going to do it for today's episode. Um, I want to, I, I, and really right now, guys, I just, I just kind of want to leave the audience with this today. Um, I, I have some thoughts about kind of what's been going on in the world. And, you know, we've kind of gone through coronavirus. We um, have now uh, people protesting, which, which I, don't, I don't have a problem with. I, I mean, I think the riots are, have gotten a little out of control in certain areas. Um, but I do think that we are coming to, to times in our, in our history that we do need to be somber and be serious about. And um, I would just encourage everybody right now to just, Stop what you're doing, or if you can't do it right now, um, I would tell you to to, to break away um, sometime today and just pray. Um, pray for America, pray for the world, and really just um, think about what other people are going through. Really, kind of what, what what Jake just said there. You know, there there has been injustices done throughout the. Whole, I mean, really through eternity, through our whole entire world's history, there's been injustices done. Um, and um, but I, I, the only thing that's really gonna uh, be the, 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 the solution is God and, and is, is prayer. And I just, and I believe that prayer changes things. And I, and honestly, you know, through this whole thing, I'll tell you, you know, I kind of started this whole thing almost a little upset and a little angry. And then I kind of said, you know what, God, what do you want to teach me? And I, I really kind of almost felt convicted at that point and said, Hey, you know, I need to be a better person. I need to be, um, you know, I need to be praying more. I need to be um, making sure that I'm doing the right thing every time and focused on that just as, and I, and we, we talk about that all the time, but sometimes when we go through hardships or people do things that we don't understand. We, um, we tend to focus on those things. So focus on what you guys can control today and don't focus on what you guys can't control. And I just want to give you guys some encouragement today to set aside some time and pray for America and pray for this world. And that's going to do it for today's episode. Thank you guys so much for spending the time. Um, you guys already know what Good Success is all about, so I'm not going to go through any of the other products that we have. But as always, remember to be a conduit, not a bucket. Work to have to give.